Okay, I, I just wanted to, I just put this down because I wanted to talk about it about a problem we have. Um, okay, is that better? Good enough? How about that? There we go. All right, so I, I didn't make any slides, and I just put this down because I think it's a discussion. So we actually maintain our own Clang fork, okay? Not ideal. Um, so but the question is, like, why do we do this, right? And I'm curious, like, I think this is a common problem. And I, I, I have a feeling it is, because it's, it's both for Cilium and for the stuff I work on. Um, so, so basically, at, we wrote a lot of our programs kind of early on in like Clang 12 or something, or 13, I don't know, sure, some version of Clang, right? And then as we tried to upgrade Clang to the latest versions, we would rebuild our programs and they wouldn't work anymore. Like the, the verifier would do things, the Clang would do things and the verifier would, ex would explode. Um, I think the, recent, the most recent one that I, that I had debugged, I think before I came here, as just a sort of a, a case point, right, is that on older versions of Clang, it was writing the socket cookie field of the socket as a, as a 64, an eight byte load. So just wrote, wrote it over. And then I upgraded, I was just like, let's see what happens when I upgrade. And I upgraded to the sort of the, I don't know, nightly or latest Clang, because I wanted to see what was going on. And I was probably doing some of our backports for Clang. <laughs> and, and it basically decided to write that as one byte loads. So eight one byte loads that then got code moved around. So it like split some other code in the middle and then did an eight, like eight byte, one byte loads eight times. And then the verifier saw that as us breaking apart a pointer and decided that that, that was invalid because we had split up a pointer inside um, one of the functions. It, didn't, it, you know, it wants to copy pointers in big chunks. Anyways, that's like one very specific example. So what we actually do in practice is, is I have, I think, some version of Clang that we had um, at, at one point, and I basically backport all of the BPF patches on the BPF backend uh, on top of that. And then I actually revert a few things from the optimization passes, some improvements from that side, because they, they cause us trouble. So I guess <laughs> two questions. Is, does anybody run the latest Clang <laughs> other than the CI tests? And then do we want to have like a common Clang backport? Um, I'm just, just throwing this out there for discussion. Um, I will just observe from the Windows perspective, we ran into the same problems with a different verifier, mm -hmm. where uh, Clang 10 and 11 are fine, but as soon as we move to 12 and up, that it doesn't verify anymore. Mm -hmm. And so for the latest stuff, we're stuck on Clang 11, which means you get you know, maybe less optimizations, but some of the optimizations are what uh, can't be verified because it creates correlated branches that the prevail verifier doesn't deal well with correlated branches. Um, but same thing, um, and there's like bug fixes, right? So I think Clang 12 added uh, some fixes into the uh, line number, and you know the source code line number information BTF, and so we yeah. can't pick up those fixes because we're kind of stuck. Or you so, do what I do, and you maintain your own branch. Uh, right, but I'm saying we don't do that right now, <laughs> right? But it does mean we're stuck dealing with yeah, all yeah, the same problems as you talked about. Yeah, it's so. like I, I need BTF uh, and I need BTF I feel for and you. tags, and I, I just backport them and have our branch. It's not terrible actually. It's pretty. It works pretty well, but. Uh, I regularly run Clang and uh, with the BPF program latest one, and uh, yeah, sometimes we do have bugs, and uh, most of these got bugs from the Clang optimizer. Yeah, and they make a smart optimization, and actually a verifier cannot handle. And uh, uh, my typical reaction is to mitigate, and uh, firstly is to try to uh, clamp part. And to see whether we can, uh, in the LLVM, we have several passes and uh, basically uh, intermixed with the uh, client regular optimization. So we will try to see whether we can change the IR pattern and try to prevent these optimizations. But sometimes it proves difficult. Yeah. And uh, so uh, you will see sometimes I also have patches in the uh, uh, kernel repository and I try to work around the issues. Yeah, so consider as a regression and uh, those things, we, we, we kind of like use the upstream clan, so these things is inevitable. We, we, we are not controlling that, and they are not really run the BPF self-test every day, and uh, we are not covered uh, with the self-test with the BPF, yeah. with the clan and unit test as well. So, so I, the, the problem I have, right, is, is the self-tests are small enough that we don't trigger a lot of the issues, right? And I, I have a really hard time, like, unless I spend a lot of time, 
uh-huh. to like look at the pipeline of LLVM, look at the IR, see where the optimization pass went wrong, like walk that all the way back to the code. And then even if I do that a lot of the times, it's like try to build a small sample that duplicates it is sometimes just really, really hard, right? Like because you're, you're, you know, buried in a big code base trying to, trying to extract just the minimal set, right? It's quite tricky. And if it's not open source, then you're even more in a world of trouble. Right? Don't extract it. Like put the big... The whole big thing in there. It's thousands of lines of code, right? So? Th- th- that's actually fun. And uh, so basically, <laughs> if you look at the self test, we have this pile of perf 600, and then recently, Clan, they changed the loop, complete the loop on rolling. They actually break the instruction set. We have an instruction set like a 16 bit and like a signed int range for the offset, and it exceeds that. So we have to mitigate the issues. But the point is, uh, the uh, self-test do produce complicated code. And I think if you have such cases, it would be good just to contribute, even just for the loading part. Cloudflare added their big test. It's a couple, at least a thousand lines. So, uh, like, answering your question, like, whether it makes sense to have an official Clang backport, no. Like, it's it's a dead end. It's a fork, right? You know how all the forks end up badly. So, like, the only way is to, like, keep up with Clang, with Clang development nightly, and, like, do more tests, add more tests, and we'll keep fixing Clang. And if you didn't backport all of the Clang backend, LLVM backend changes that and Hong did around summer of last year. I, I there it. was there was a ton <laughs> there, like changes yeah, yeah. made to uh, kind of pessimize some of the too yes. smart optimizations that the OVM yes, was yes. doing. So that was done. So after that, things actually improved quite a bit because we were seeing this like yeah, OVM yeah, would yeah. like add the constant there because it knows that the register is like <laughs> with the constant delta so it's like the crazy we, stuff we rely on all this like we backported i'm backported all of the bpf back back end right like th- there's nothing these are not specific to bpf back end usually usually these are things deep in the core of the optimization layer like there was a they changed some of the registry allocation stuff right at one point about two years ago right and this this caused some issues but yeah i think in the latest version if the uh, optimizations were uh, perhaps more parameterizable to like specify instead of just saying you know minus O2 or if there was more granularity, then there'd probably be a lot less fewer problems for either John or me. That, that, if I could ask for one thing, it would be that. We tried this approach many times, so if, and every time we got nagged by all the M folks. So that's why we're doing this uh, fancy wrapping into the function, into global <laughs> variable helpers to PCMIs optimizations, because upstream LLVM refused to uh, deselect optimizations yeah. based on the backend. Um, so the problem that I'm running into may be different from everybody else's problem, but given that I got to solve it for two different platforms, meaning I needed to work for both Linux and uh, Windows, uh, which have different verifiers, right? And so if one verifier can verify things, another one can't, and optimizer is optimized for one verifier, then that's when you start to run into problems if, or if you fall back to lowest common denominator. So that's what I mean by configurable or whatever. Uh, um, I suspect the issues, like yeah, any verifier but, uh, will have issues because the, yeah, yeah, the yeah, some, yeah. some of this yeah. optimization is just like not right, possible right. without right. doing so, the full like compiler analysis. Yeah. So the other like, possibility would be for Clang, if there was like CI CD for Clang that actually ran, say, two verifiers and any new optimizations that affected BPF bytecode. That would also be fine. So I would actually turn the question around and would ask like, should we test our self test with older Clangs? So like we know that we I don't think it'll Please work. have like workarounds for some <laughs> issues. So like I don't know, like should we? Because like for libpf, for example, we run like old kernels, like latest self test on old kernels. We obviously just like, have some su- subset of tests that run there. Should we do that with like major Clang releases? Just... I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't sign up to maintain this, but I'm just proposing. 
Well, some of the tests will know will not work, so like we can potentially, but in the readme in self-test, we list all of the LVM diffs that are required to even run the self-test. Sometimes they compile the self-test. Sometimes Clank will just crash. The older Clanks without <laughs> bug fixes will just crash. <clears throat> but in the past, uh, we had one uh, LVM, bit bolt, bit LVM build bot that we contributed. Back then, for every backend, there was a requirement that there should be public build bot. And I think it died by now, so we can like do it, do it again. And there we can let's say it will be running for every LVM commit. So instead of what we do effectively, we do in nightlies of Clank, we can put a spawn LWS instance that needs to be really really beefy, and run all of the LVM stuff for every commit. And then like upstream will see that oh you're breaking VPF build button. That would be great. It's work. <laughs> <laughs> but you mentioned, right? I mean, like other backends probably also have their own test suite, and when something breaks, they will they will revert the change upstream, right? So they do. Yeah, yeah like Windows build. There are like I think four Windows build bots for different. I don't know why, but like they do different stuff. This would be so ideal. Like, right? Would this be acceptable from an LVM? Community like where you, where you would use that as an argument to revert the optimization change, or is that not the way forward? Depends. Like yeah, that would be a gray area. At least we will, they will notice and we will notice. Like first of all, they will notice because often, like when Yon Hong notices that the latest clan broke something, like he will bisect it to a commit that happened months ago, because it's like hard. Yeah, it, it depends. Mostly general optimization is really hard to revert really hard. So uh, you have to provide a workaround or BPF specific paths to change the behaviors. I guess the conclusion is contribute more self tests. Well, like, yeah. So, but like, I, uh, yeah, I mean, like what, like, what is the way forward if they merge an optimization that is really hard to verify it? And we are stuck, kind of, or? We change the verifier, or like uh, every time that happened, we managed to for your home managed to find a way to well, <laughs> trickle them not to do it. <laughs> so now we have like passes that run in the client phase, then passes run at very very early at the LVMIR phase, etc. Et So basically, realistically, we can improve detection. I don't think we can prevent this, right? That's the conclusion. Without like a build bot, right? Like, I mean, if we went to put a build Even bot. Even with build bot, like BPF backend has to have enough political weight to actually say like, no, this is not going in. And I don't think we have it. And like realistically, I'm not sure we will. Yeah, but it. it's still a huge struggle. Like, I think that would be super helpful, right? Because the struggle now is like, we are, um, you know, we notice it quite late. Right. But we notice it, it was self task. It's just like that self task covers some patterns of the code, and like you guys use different patterns. So like if you contribute your patterns, like you we will catch it sooner because we yeah. run it. But, all but the time. that's a, like <laughs> yes. There's no good argument against what you're saying, by the way. I mean, I, other than I'm going to tell you, it's a bunch of work to find those patterns, right? Like. But, but like what pipe we have like pipe path like that's that's actually taken from a real application like strip down some some like irrelevant parts and like it's pretty much full thing so I know if you can do that but try like in especially in Silicon tests you don't need to run even run the traffic you just take your two thousand lines program and just load them that's it. <laughs> That's good enough. That's what we do for well for Piper FX even like trying to like no we don't even try to run yeah we just load. Very, very high scale they just load. So the, so the, the the biggest amount of work right is to get our stuff working on latest. <laughs> There's no nothing you can do to help with that right like we have to do that and then at that point then we can start doing regression testing but like right now we're at a point where we can't even do regression testing because it just doesn't work. Right? That's. A resource problem. To do list is getting longer. The more days I've been here. 